Hello and welcome to Restoring Britain, a series that looks at the reasons for considering the reintroduction of species that once belonged to the UK. Each episode we will focus on species that have either been reintroduced or those that may be considered for reintroductions. We will focus on the ecology and benefits ha of having those reintroductions and also end the show with a, an interview with a conservationist that has worked with that animal. Look forward to learning about beaver, lynx, white tail eagle, pine martin, water vole and white stork. when lions, hyenas, elephants and mammoths and other great fauna roamed our lands. However, some of these went extinct naturally because of changes in climates or because of humans. We may want to consider reintroducing species because of the benefits that they may have. In this episode, we will focus on the Eurasian beaver, the world's second largest rodent that went extinct in the UK over 400 years ago. I've come to Aegis Field Centre where there is a beaver demonstration project which will allow us to see the positive impacts that beavers can have on their ecosystem. Although it's not likely we will see one now because they are crepuscular, meaning that they tend to come out at dawn and dusk, I do know somewhere where we can see one. This is a taxidermy beaver which has been preserved so that we can have a look at how it's adapted to its life in the waters. Let's begin with the most striking of its features, its teeth, which are really tough because they chew down trees. They do this by sinking their top incisors into the tree of choice and using their bottom incisors they scrape upwards. This repeated action will result in wood chips which will fall on the floor and is a telltale sign of beavers. Cool fact about beavers teeth is that they are self-sharpening. They consist of two different um, elements. The front is made up of a hard enamel and the back a softer dentine. The erosive action of chewing down trees means that the back of the teeth erodes quicker than the front, which leaves a sharp chisel-like shape. A combination of their tough and sharp teeth and strong cheek muscles means that they're pretty much able to chew through any tree. Now the next amazing adaptation of a beaver is their fur, which consists of two different types of hair. The top layer are longer guard cells, which secrete a water repellent chemical, which stops water getting to the second layer of fur, which is an under fur, which keeps the beaver warm. Up here in Scotland, temperatures can get so cold that the lakes freeze over. So these guys really do need to stay warm. Now, as I said, they spend a lot of time of their life in the water. So they have two amazing adaptations to help them swim. That's a thick, muscly tail and webbed feet, which is a, a bit of flesh between their fingers. Let's go back outside and learn a little bit about how beavers live in their ecosystem. Beavers are called ecosystem engineers. This is because they significantly alter the environment in which they live in to make it more suitable. So like how humans build houses to stay safe and warm, beavers also build them. They build lodges. Like we build roads and paths to, to be able to move on, beavers build canals. And like we have fridges to store food in, beavers build caches where they store food for overwinter. This is a beaver lodge. It's been constructed using materials that the beaver has chopped down. Inside there will be different compartments, there'll be an area to sleep, an area to feed, and there'll also be a swimming area where the, the kits can learn to swim in a safe area away from predators. This is a beaver pool, which has been created by diverting water from a stream by damming. They do this by putting together mud, wood, leaves and other material. 
They do this so that they can feed away from the main body of water in the safety away from predators. We are now about 20 meters away from the main body of water, meaning that they can move further and further and access different food types. We have seen some of the structures which beavers can build, but what are the benefits of these? Well firstly, by damming streams and rivers, they slow the flow of water, which carries less sediment, meaning cleaner water downstream. A second benefit is that there is a reduced chance of mass flooding downstream because of the slower flow. A third benefit is that the water that builds up behind a dam spreads out, making a more complex network of wetland. In Europe, wetland habitats are a dying habitat. The area in which they're covering is reducing, so beavers are actually increasing wetland habitat. These networks of wetland habitat are benefiting other species such as invertebrates, amphibians and birds. So let's hear from conservationist Sir John Lister Kay what is being done to bring beavers back. So for this part of the show I'm joined by Sir John Lister Kay who's going to help us answer some questions regarding beavers. So John, uh, beavers ex went extinct 400 years ago. What were the main reasons for this? Oh, they were hunted out for their fur and their castoreum oil. Great. Um, and what's to stop that happening again? Uh, I think, uh, first of all, we have very sophisticated protection legislation these days. But also, I think that uh, um, because real fur, as opposed to artificial fur, has become... Uh, um, almost unusable, unacceptable to the general public, I think it's extremely unlikely that uh, hunting beavers could, could happen again. Earlier in the show I talked about some of the benefits of having beavers in the ecosystem. Are there any negative impacts that beavers can have and how can we reduce those? Y yes, there are some negatives. Um, beavers in the wrong place can be a nuisance. For instance, if you have um, an alluvial plain and a river running down the middle and the, the floodwaters are held back by levees, um, beavers are capable of burrowing through those levees and allowing river water in flood to go into um, arable fields, um, flooding crops, potatoes, carrots, um, um, possibly even uh, grain crops as well. And clearly farmers are going to find that very, very irritating. Mm -hmm. In the absence of any large predators in the UK, is it possible that their population could boom and have um, negative impacts as a result? Well, there are really two questions there. Um, the first part is could the population grow and the answer is yes undoubtedly uh, there are very few predators <clears throat> otters will take young beaver kits out of the lodge um, sometimes um, but generally speaking the level of natural predation is is very low um, so the population will expand and after all we've seen that on the river tay uh, from um, one male and two females escaping from a wildlife park. Um, there are now probably between 400 and 450 beavers on the Tay system and its seven tributaries. So yes, there's no doubt that the, the animal will proliferate. The second part of the question is whether that presents unmanageable difficulties. And, and I don't think it does. But it does depend a little bit upon the legislation and the quality of the um, protection uh, legislation gives it. Um, in Scotland, the um, responsibility for managing wildlife falls with uh, Scottish Natural Heritage and they have um, the ability to issue licences for controlling um, but for instance, badgers in, it was, it, it, God forbid, but if, if bovine TV, TB came into Scotland, uh, 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 SNH would have the power to uh, issue control licences. Um, so beavers can be controlled. 
They can also be trapped and moved. They're actually relatively easy to trap and they can be shipped out to places. Now, this is an important point, Phil, because um, most river systems in Scotland have um, a youth age, a middle age and a maturity, and most of the agricultural land is in the maturity section. Upstream, uh, particularly in the middle age uh, bits, um, which are still not fast flowing water, they're medium speed flowing water, and of course in many, many lochs, there is brilliant beaver habitat which shouldn't conflict with anybody. Uh, so uh, I'm optimistic that with um, a sensible management stratagem put in place by the Scottish Government, administered by Scottish Natural Heritage, it should be possible to manage beavers sensibly. So just to pick up on a point that you made just there, what makes a suitable habitat for beavers? Well, be uh, beavers are a species of optimal habitat. That is to say that if you plonk a beaver in a river, it won't stay there. It will go and find the best habitat for itself. Mm -hmm. And that depends obviously on food supply and uh, a place to build a lodge and possibly uh, uh, places to build dams. Um, but most importantly is food supply. And because they are very dependent upon hardwood trees, they tend to go to places where the banks are well lined with, with hardwoods. Um, Aspen is their favourite, then there's willow and there's birch and there are several other species that they'll go for. Um, so I think that um, uh, because we've got a lot of optimal beaver habitat, particularly in the highlands, rather less in the lowlands perhaps, but certainly in the highlands, I think there is uh, um, uh, great scope for the animal. Being able to do what it is, which is a keystone species delivering uh, um, benefits for a huge range of other species. Fantastic. So you mentioned there that uh, a population has um, grown on the River Tay and that these were escapes. Have there been any official releases of beavers? There was an official government-sponsored trial um, and some uh, Norwegian or Swedish beavers were uh, shipped in and released in Knapdale in Argyllshire. Uh, I think many, uh, many commentators thought that it was not a good place to do it and it got off to quite a rocky start. The beavers didn't like it and they moved. But then they settled down and they, there is now an established small population. And the trial lasted however many years it was and it enabled the Scottish Government to take the decision to allow the beaver back uh, as a native species. And, and as you, you may have heard, it's just recently been um, given full legal protection. Thank you very much for that insight, John. Uh, we're going to go back outside now and wrap up today's episode. So in today's episode, we have learnt that beavers, as ecosystem engineers, may have benefits for the environment and for other species, and that current reintroduction programmes will hopefully result in beavers wild in the UK soon. Join me in next episode, where we'll be going to Highland Wildlife Park to learn a little bit about Eurasian lynx.